The terror drama proved that the interchain relied too much on UST. UST was a dollar packed stablecoin that was issued on Terra. Most stablecoin pools on Osmosis were filled with UST. People who tried to escape market volatility got wrecked as UST went significantly below the USD pack. So, which will be the next dominant stablecoin in the interchain? Today we will look at IST, the native stablecoin of the Agoric blockchain. We will discuss the different ways to mint IST, how the stablecoin keeps its USD pack and so much more. But before kickstarting this episode, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like. This triggers the YouTube algorithm and leads to an atom pump on the other hand. And now let us dive deeper into IST. Before diving deeper, there are some terms that you have to understand. The IST token will be distributed on Agoric. Agoric is a Cosmos native blockchain that is about to go fully live very soon. Agoric is famous for allowing developers to build smart contracts with JavaScript. As of now, developers need to program in Solidity to build smart contracts. However, JavaScript is a much more adopted programming language than Solidity. That said, Agoric opens up a large market to bring more developers into Web3. Another thing that you have to understand is BLD. BLD is the staking and governance token of the Agoric blockchain. Besides, it also represents the governance token of the Inter protocol. But more about the Inter protocol in a minute. Lastly, you have to understand what the Builder DAO is all about. It is a DAO where people can vote on governance proposals by staking BLD. With these terms in mind, let us talk about the Inter protocol. The Inter protocol is the heart of the IST stablecoin. This is the place where IST gets minted and issued. You can imagine it a little bit like MechaDAO, where users can mint DAI, the dominant stablecoin of the Ethereum ecosystem. Users have three different ways to mint IST on the Inter protocol. We will have a closer look at these three ways in a minute. But on a high level, the Inter protocol provides an environment where users can mint IST permissionless. Therefore, the user has to deposit a collateral to cover the IST loan. Because when minting IST, you essentially borrow IST from the Inter protocol. By paying your debt back, you can also withdraw your collateral again. But more about that in a minute. There are two fees users have to pay when minting IST. The stability and minting fee. As the name suggests, the stability fee aims to keep IST's dollar pack as the IST price could lose the USD pack when users mint more IST than the market demands. The minting fee is kind of a service fee that you have to pay when minting IST. All fees are added to the debt that the users have to pay back when withdrawing their collateral. The fee revenue is shared between the reserve pool and reward pool. The reserve pool supports the stability of the Inter protocol and the reward pool rewards BLD stakers for securing the chain. The amount of IST that a user can mint is determined by the value of the deposited collateral. This concept is called the collateralization ratio. The collateralization ratio is determined on a per collateral basis by decentralized governance. If the dollar value of the collateral falls below the collateralization ratio, the protocol liquidates your loan. So, it sells your collateral to pay off the remaining debt in a so-called penalty fee. In a nutshell, users can mint IST on the Inter protocol. Therefore, users have to deposit a collateral to cover their loan. Because when minting IST, you essentially borrow IST. When paying the debt off, users can take their collateral out again. If the dollar value of the collateral you have initially deposited falls below the collateralization ratio, the protocol liquidates your loan. With the concept of the Inter protocol in mind, let us dive deeper into the first mechanism to mint IST. The first way to mint IST is the most straightforward one. Users can provide a high quality stablecoin such as USDC and receive IST in exchange for it. A smart contract powers this concept. It also creates arbitrage opportunities that users can take advantage of whenever IST gets traded below $1. This is also how IST can pack to $1 again when the price is slightly below $1. The only risk I see here is how a high quality stablecoin gets determined. After the UST drama, we can never be too sure about a stablecoin. But luckily, there are also other ways to mint IST. The second concept to mint IST reminds me a lot of MakerDAO. Again, MakerDAO is the Ethereum protocol that issues DAI. 
This concept works with vaults. Vaults are smart contracts where users can lock up their crypto assets to mint IST. As mentioned before, when withdrawing their crypto collateral, users have to repay their IST debt plus fees. Users mostly have to over collateralize their loan. So, they have to put more money in crypto assets into the vault than being able to get it out. This is because most crypto assets are very, very volatile. If users would deposit a collateral for a one-to-one -one ratio to collateralize their loan, the loan would most likely get liquidated in no time. I mentioned the liquidation process already as well. If the value of the collateral you have initially deposited falls below the collateralization ratio, the protocol liquidates your loan. To give you a good example, let's say you have $100 worth of Atom. Now you could deposit this amount of Atom to take 50 IST out of the Inter protocol. If your Atom position crashes to $80, nothing will happen, because you over collateralized your loan for such an event. However, if the Atom value is about to fall below $50, the protocol liquidates your loan. Of course, you would still have your 50 IST if you did not sell it and your deposited Atom position would be gone. The advantage of the Inter protocol to make a DAO for example is that Agoric is IBC enabled. IBC is a communication standard of Cosmos that blockchains can use to communicate with each other. That said, every IBC asset could theoretically be used to collateralize an IST loan but only whitelisted assets will be allowed as collateral on the Inter protocol. The BLD holders decide which assets will be whitelisted and allowed as collateral. The third way to mint IST is by staking BLD. Again, BLD is a native staking and governance token of Agoric. BLD stakers can lock up a portion of their stake BLD to mint IST. The debt can be repaid by future IST staking rewards. BLD that is locked up remains staked and continues to earn staking rewards. However, users cannot unstake their BLD nor withdraw their staking rewards until they pay back the minted IST plus fees. Unlike minting IST through a vault, locked up BLD is not subject to liquidation. This is also where the Builder DAO comes into play. The DAO determines parameters for IST stake. These include the total debt limit, the minting limit per account, minting fees and interest rates. When holding BLD, you can participate in governance procedures in the Builder DAO. Finally, let us talk about the security mechanisms of the Inter protocol. The Inter protocol prevents de-packing by five mechanisms. The first line of defense is over collateralization. The Inter protocol will liquidate the vault collateral if the vaults drop below the liquidation threshold. If this does not help, the reserve pool is used to cover any remaining shortfall. If a shortfall still remains, additional fees from the reserve pool are used to cover the outstanding debt. And if this also does not achieve the desired goal, the Builder DAO can vote to issue more BLD. To wrap things up, the Inter protocol is not live yet, but it will be in the middle of this year. However, the Inter protocol sounds very promising. First of all, it not only provides one way to mint IST, but three. This makes it much less fragile to concepts like Terra or MakerDAO. Even if one minting process fails, the user still have two other ways. Secondly, the Inter protocol provides several security mechanisms to keep IST's pack to $1. And besides, the minting process of IST does not involve an aggressive method to strengthen BLD's tokenomics. This was the case with Terra, which is why Luna and UST failed. Finally, we must see a stablecoin that can be backed by IBC assets, such as Atom. ETH is also considered sound money because it backs DAI, the most dominant stablecoin in the Ethereum ecosystem. With IST, the interchain could also get its own stablecoin, strengthening the tokenomics of several Cosmos coins. And with the help of IBC and Bridges, we could see IST all over the crypto industry. This is why we at DeFi Times are very excited about the launch and hope to see IST succeeding. However, please note as always that we at DeFi Times are no financial advisors. All content is strictly for informational purposes only. None of our statements represents financial advice. But now let us know what you think of IST. 
Will you trust the stablecoin? Comment in the comment section below. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like. This triggers the YouTube algorithm and leads to an atom pump on the other hand. And with that being said, I hope I will see you on Thursday when we make a big announcement. So stay tuned.